Hey, what's up everybody? Cam King and welcome to this training. All right, so like the title of the training says, we're gonna fix your sales process in three steps, three easy steps. There's really only three things that you even have to worry about. So let's talk about those. If you're having a problem with sales right now, if sales are down or low or slow, or maybe you haven't even started selling, here's how to think about improving that sales process. It's really simple, three things that we can do. There are three components. There are the people that you're trying to sell to, okay? There is the offer you are making those people, okay? And then third, there is the follow-up. Are you following up with people once you've made them an offer? So you have the people that you're trying to sell to, the offer you're making to those people, and then the follow-up that you're using to follow up with those people making that offer, okay? So only three things that we need to even think about. So first thing, talking about the people. If you have very few people, then you need more people, okay? If, you have a, if you're putting your offer out there, or you're sending people to a website or whatever, if you're sending the same 50 people every week or every day or every month of the same 100 or two or 500, if your sales aren't growing, then you need to get more people. You just need to get your offer in front of more people, okay? Super simple, all right? It's really very simple. Number two is once you've got more people that are going to your offer, going to your pages, going to your website, seeing the actual products, um, you gotta improve that offer, okay? If you have all the people in the world go into your offer. And, and real quick, what's the difference between a product and an offer? Well, a product is like, hey, this is what we have, this is what it costs, would you like to buy? That's a product. Nobody really buys products anymore, they buy offers. An offer is, yeah, this is what it is, this is who it's for, this is why it's amazing, here are the benefits and advantages of buying from us, this is what makes it special or unique, this is what you're gonna get, this is how you're gonna feel, uh, this is why you need to buy right now, this is why we're making this special offer today, here's all the social proof and testimonials of other people, right, here's these amazing images and, and great videos, Here's the guarantee. Here's So an offer is so much more than just a product, right? But isn't that like kind of um, self-explanatory or obvious that people, instead of just saying, hey, here's my beef bundle, this is the price would you like to buy, if we instead wrap it in all these elements and turn it into an offer, doesn't it make, make like logical sense that people would buy the offer more than they buy the product? Of course. So take that same product and turn it into an offer. Okay, so uh, repeat. Number one, you need to have more people that you're, sh that you're trying to sell to that are seeing your offer. Number two, you need to improve your offer. And number three, it's all about the follow-up. If you have a ton of people who are seeing your offer but they're only seeing it one time, guess how many people go drop a couple hundred bucks on anything the first time they see it? Like hardly anybody does that. Okay, you don't do that, I don't do that, hardly anybody does that. It's a very small subset of your customers will see your offer or your product the first time and buy, especially like the, and the more money it is, like the higher the price, the fewer, the smaller the percentage of people who will buy it on the first time they see it. And so that's why the third, the third piece of this, you know, fixing your sales process is all about the follow-up because you can't just show that offer one time. It, you could, I mean, if you're showing that, that offer one time to a thousand people or 10,000 people, very small percentage are going to buy. That's why we need to show that same offer to those same people five, 10, 15 times. Okay, so it's all about the follow-up. Let me give you a few ideas of how you can follow up with people. Actually, let me walk you through the whole funnel. Let's say you've got your offer, okay, and you've got all these people, and you are marketing to all these people. You're running ads, or you're sending emails, or you're partnering with other businesses, and they're promoting you, and all of these people are being sent to your offer or your product page on your website, okay? And so they're all seeing it, and they see it once. Now, how do you follow up with those people? Well, if they're on your email list, you send them more emails. <laughs> Not rocket science here. You just send them more emails. Um, too often, producers are worried that if the more emails I send, I'm gonna annoy people, right? They're gonna get annoyed with me and they're gonna unsubscribe. It's like, great, separate the wheat from the chaff, the sheep from the goats. You want to, if they are on your list, it's because they want to hear from you. And so if you are not doing your job of marketing to them and showing them and giving them opportunities to say yes to the products that they clearly are interested in buying, if you're not doing that, then they're not gonna ever be able to get the value from you that they desire. And so you have to market to them. You have to give them more opportunities to say yes. They want it. The people who unsubscribe, great. You, it, you're not for everybody. Your product, your business, your personality, your values, your ethic, like you are not for everybody. And that is one of the biggest mistakes that that producers or small business owners in this industry make and in every industry, but specifically in farming and ranching is like, we put out a product and we're like, hey, this is for everybody. Everybody loves protein, everybody loves beef, everybody needs grass-fed you know, X, Y, and Z. But when we do that, we say, hey, I'm for everybody, guess what? How that strikes people is lukewarm. 
right? And nobody likes taking a lukewarm bath. Nobody likes um, buying from someone who's just kind of like, oh, yeah, you can have it if you want, and it's kind of nice, and maybe you like it. No, we want to be, we want to like feel that there's some passion about that, and we want to feel like, no, weird that like, this is for me. It's not for some other people. This is for me, right? They're speaking to me. They're, they're trying to give me what I want, what I desire, what I value and care about. And so w- your product is not for everybody. Your business is not for everybody. And so you need to be sending out these emails and following up with people because you're trying to find out of all the people on your email list, who are the ones that actually really want to be there? Who are the ones that are really, truly interested in not just your product, but the specific advantages that you are offering through your product? Because some people might take grass-fed beef. Some producers might take grass-fed beef and we're marketing that and it's all about health and it's about feeling great and it's about being active, living an active lifestyle. And others are going, it's all about disease management. It's all about um, disease mitigation. It's all about um, getting back, you know, your health back from a disease, right? Or warding off disease. Um, and even others might be focused on, no, this is all about feeding my kids. It's not even really about me. It's about my posterity. It's about my children. It's about their health. It's about my peace of mind. And so there's all these kind of, these little niches that people should be fo- can focus on and, and reasons why people buy. So people buy for all different types of reasons. And so you want to be following up with people, promoting that offer, finding out who are my people in my group, in my list, in my audience that want this from me. And so the follow-up is huge, right? You got to have a lot of people that are seeing your offer. You got to make a great offer. And then you have to follow up with those people. It's really that simple. And it's easy to see, right? If you you take a moment, do a little reflecting on your business, it's really easy to see out of these three steps where are you weak right now, okay? And if you're weak in all three, I'll tell you where you should start, right here, the offer. If you are weak in all three, if you're weak in the follow-up, if you're weak in the offer, and you're weak in the number of people that you're sending to your offer, then this is where you start, the offer. Because you can send a billion people to a crappy offer and no one's gonna buy. Or you can send 100 people to an amazing offer and 50 of them will buy, and you'll make 10 grand, okay? So the offer first, and then I would say follow up, okay? Because if you have, again, it's that same 100 people. If you got 100 people that you're showing an offer and it's an incredible offer and then you're following up with those 100 people, you might get 10 or 15 to buy on day one. But with a great follow up, man, you could get 30, 40, 50 of them to buy. And so you don't need a ton of people if you've got a great offer and great follow up. And then thirdly is flood, flood your offer with people, with traffic. Send as many people to that offer as possible. But undoubtedly, the first thing that you want to do if all three of these steps is weak in your business is you want to go fix that offer. You want to make that offer as irresistible, as compelling, as desirable as possible. Because that, I mean, if you think about it, we, I could give you so many examples, not just in our industry, but in um, across all industry, of the, the offer was the thing that catapulted a business to massive success. I can give you so many examples. Um, I mean, one of the most obvious ones is think about, um, uh, was it Domino's? Yeah, Tom Monahan, Domino's. Or is it pizza? No, Domino's, right? Um, the offer, right? Was the, the offer of Domino's is what catapulted Domino's, okay? It had nothing to do with the quality of the product. It had nothing to do with the, the price of the product. It had everything to do with the offer of the product, which was, it was like, um, uh, your, like your pizza delivered you know, hot and fresh in 30 minutes or less or, or it's free, right? And so like that offer, it was the offer. It wasn't the product. It wasn't the price. It wasn't the location. It wasn't the branding. It was the offer that catapulted Domino's. And then he was able to sell it after 20 years for a billion dollars. And we could go through, there are so many examples. It's the offer. In any product category, the offer is number one. And so if you nail the offer, then you don't need to send a million people to your offer. If you nail the offer, you can send a hundred, you can send a thousand, you can send a couple thousand, and you will make all the money you can handle. And so start with the offer, then focus on the follow-up, and then flood your offer with more people. Okay, that's what I would do. All right, so those are the three things that you can do to uh, make, make, fix your sales process. And whatever you call it, you could call it a sales funnel, you could call it a sales process, it really doesn't matter, it's just semantics. The idea is there is a, there is a process, though, that people go through to, before they purchase, right? There is, a, there is a journey that they go on from meeting you or hearing about you for the very first time, for learning about you and seeing what you stand for, what you care about, what you value, what matters to you and how you do what you do and what the benefits are that you offer that nobody else can offer. Um, and then being willing to buy, right? And they can't be willing to buy unless we make them offers. So we have to make people offers. So don't make the mistake of just saying, hey, this is what I have, this is what it costs, would you like to buy? Sometimes, sometimes, if you're not doing anything, then sometimes simply saying, hey, I have beef, do you want some? We'll bring in some sales. 
but it's not a great plan. It's a terrible strategy and it doesn't work long term or at scale. Okay, but it is better than nothing. And so if you haven't even started yet, then the very first step that you should take is to say, hey, I've got some grass fed beef, right? You want to stake your flag in the ground so other people can see it. Say, I have got some grass fed product, whatever it is that you're selling. Um, would you like to buy? Okay, that is like the first step. If you, ha if you haven't done anything, that's the first step. And then from there, improve that offer. Okay, turn that product into an offer. And again, it's all about explaining and expressing and articulating the benefits and advantages to the customer that you offer, that your product offers, that no one else can offer. And you might be thinking, well, Cam, if I've got grass-fed beef and there's a thousand other people. In fact, there might be a hundred thousand other producers that have grass-fed beef and we're all selling the same product. Well, so I can't really, you know, what advantages do I have that are unique? <laughs> Let me tell you. Um, out of the, let's say, 100,000 producers that are selling grass-fed beef, guess how many of them are articulating, who are articulating to the customer the benefits and advantages of grass-fed beef? <laughs> like, like 120. <laughs> like, nobody's doing this. Like, no one is doing this. Go look at... Go look at the biggest brands in this industry, most of which have consulted with me at some point. Um, and there's some things that they've done that taken some advice they've taken, but um, much that they have not. And I think it's mostly because once you get to a certain level in business, the business owner or the entrepreneur, the CEO, they're not making all the decisions. In fact, it's the marketing department, who's usually who I work with, the marketing department and the head of marketing, the VP of marketing, whatever, they are the ones that are kind of making the marketing decisions. And they get they are incented not for long-term growth right not to, for a long-term strategy they are incented to implement short-term results so what's the fastest way to get short-term results in any business well it's to do the opposite of what my advice typically is it's to do discounts it's to do sales it's to do flash sales it's to do all of these things because they bring in an influx of cash um, but the profit margin like the gross margins tank and it's just a bad strategy so anywho um, one of the things that I always advise people that no, hardly anyone takes me up on this except for our private clients and those who are in our customers on demand program, you guys rock by the way, nod to y'all, um, is to, it's to really articulate these benefits. It's to say, right, because saying that I have grass fed beef and it's healthier for you, that's not a benefit. That's not an advantage. That's lazy. That's just pure lazy. Um, instead, you want to think from the customer's perspective, what is it that they're looking for? What are the benefits or advantages that are desirable to them, right? And so you got to know your product better than anybody else, certainly better than the customer, and definitely better than all your competitors. You need to understand what is grass-fed beef? What is grass-fed protein? What's in there? What are the nutrient makeup? What are the macros? That might, like, what is it? And what does it do? And what does that balance of minerals and what does that balance of vitamins and what does the omega-3s and the 6s, like what does that actually mean for a human being? What are the benefits? Why is it better? What will it do for you? Is, will it make you sleep better? How? Explain that. And if you don't know that, go study it. Go learn it. It's out there. Oh my gosh, 2020, we have access to the world's knowledge at our fingertips. And so go understand and learn. That should be step number one, actually, is you need to understand your product and the benefits that it offers to a human body better than anyone else. And then you need to go articulate those benefits because I'll tell you what, none of your competition is doing that. The biggest businesses, the biggest brands in our industry, you can look at their product pages, they're crap. <laughs> they're absolute garbage. <laughs> I mean, they're terrible. You want to know how they make money? They start with millions of dollars. <laughs> And then they spend that on advertising and they get cash flow and it's all about the cash flow and there's almost never any margins, which is why people go out of business after two, three, five, ten 10 years. Okay. And so you look at the businesses today that are in business, um, how many of them that are doing millions of dollars a year were also doing millions of dollars a year 10 years ago? I could think of like two. Okay. I can think about two. And yet I can think of a few dozen that have been in that position, but they're all out of business. Okay. Um, and it's not the business model. It's not the business model. It's the fact that what they're selling is not the benefits. They're not selling the benefits and advantages. They're just selling a product and saying, hey, grass-fed beef, do you want to buy it? Hey, come get your grass-fed beef. It's not a novel thing. It's not a novel thing. People don't buy the product. They buy the benefit, the feeling, the advantage, the solution. That's what they buy, okay? They buy the feeling that when I get your product into my kitchen, onto my dinner table, into my freezer, that it's going to help me reach my goals that I have in my life. It's going to help me get things and feelings that I want. Right? It's going to help me feel like a better father when I cook dinner for my kids. It's going to help me make memories with my kids when I teach them how to cook during the whole COVID thing and we're homeschooling. It's going to help me reach my fitness goals right? because I have these goals and I know that I need nutrition, education. I need to work out. I need accountability. I need all these things. And so your product, your grass-fed product 
that plays an integral role in me achieving my goals, my dreams, my aspirations, becoming the best version of myself. And so because this is true and this is why people buy, we need to articulate that. We need to spell that out for people. Okay, on every single product page. Don't be like one of the, don't go look at, I won't name names because I actually like, I like a lot of these people. I actually like all of them. Um, and I'm good friends with some of them. Um, and I've, again, I've consulted with many of them. Uh, but don't model their product pages. Okay, I actually cannot think of a large um, grass-fed retailer right now in, in North America whose product page I would model. I don't think there's anyone. And I'm, I mean, I'm pretty sure I know them all. I don't think that there's, or if I don't know them personally, and I, if I haven't worked with them, that I know of them, I don't think there's anyone that I would model, okay? And, and I'm also, this is, um, again, I'm not gonna name names, but I'm thinking of like social media influencers as well that are doing maybe seven figures and above a year. There's not a single product page out there that I would model because none of them understand the psychology behind selling products. What they understand is fame, celebrity. They understand getting, right, the three pieces. You have the people that see your products, your offers. You have the offer itself and the follow-up. Most people are, are, most businesses that are doing seven figures or above, they're all right here. All of them are right here with the number of people that see their stuff, okay? And so their offers are terrible. Their follow-up is abysmal. It just, it, like, it mimics every... It, most people's follow-up looks like Old Navy or looks like H&M or looks like, like it's just spamming you every single day with some kind of a new promotion or a discount or a, what, like a sale offer. Like that's, cr those are, that's terrible follow-up, okay? Nobody buys off that stuff. Well, you know who buys? Price shoppers. <laughs> Price shoppers buy. The people who are looking for a deal, that's who buys, all right? And so it works, yeah, it'll get sales in, but there's no profit there. So every, like most of the big, mm, I don't want to say every, I don't want to use hyperbole on this. Nearly every single seven-figure business that is a, an actual like big business or a brand in this industry, um, and I'm not talking about my private clients, um, my current private clients. So let's distinguish between private clients who I work with on an ongoing basis who are who started out as like family businesses and the big brands out there that I've consulted with. Those are two different things. Um, so uh, my private clients are all killing it with the product pages um, because they know what to do and they do it. But as far as the brands go, I cannot think of anyone who is doing a good job with their product pages because they are relying solely on the number of people that see their products because they kind of feel like if I get enough people, if I spend enough on advertising, if I get enough people to see the product or the offer, then people will buy and I'll make money. And the problem is when you send a ton of people to a bad offer, you have to use things like discounts to get people to buy. And when you use discounts, your gross margin goes through the floor. Okay. And when your gross margin goes through the floor, yeah, you go out of business. Okay, eventually you sell yourself out of business. One of the most common ways that people go out, it's actually one of the, there are three things that happen when any, any time when a business goes under, especially when they get to bankruptcy, is one of the things that happens, they sell their way out of business. And so they see, oh my gosh, we're, our sales are down or low or whatever, our numbers, we're not gonna hit our numbers. And so uh, what's the easiest way to increase our sales? It's to lower prices. But when you lower prices, what happens? Well, you get more sales, you get increased vol volume, but your margins go down. And when your margins go down, your wages, like the wages that you pay your team or yourself, your income, right? The wages as a percentage of margin, as a percentage of sales, increase. And when wages increase and margins go down, guess what happens? Then you are like racing to the bottom. You're racing to the cliff. And so you're actually selling yourself out of business. And so you don't want to do that. You don't want to depend on having a ton of people and making an, a mediocre or lukewarm offer because there's no money. It's way better to have fewer people, an incredible offer, and then just a bulletproof, bombproof follow-up. Okay, and that follow-up, in the follow-up, I know this is going a lot longer than I had anticipated, but I just want to provide you guys with value. I want you to be able to go and make this work and be successful. You don't need to go join programs. I mean, heck, I think my program, I think our program, best in the world, hands down. I don't think there's any question. I think we have the only program that is repeatable, scalable, predictable that any producer can do. And it's not actually an opinion. I think that's it's proof. We've proven that. There's nothing else out there that you can do that anyone else is teaching that anyone can take and make, and make work. Nothing. Um, but that's neither here nor there. You don't need to join my program, though I would love to serve you and support your goals and have you in there. But you don't need to join a program. You don't need to go pay people to learn how to do this stuff. You just need to take action. If you understand that there's, in your sales process, there's the people that see your products and offers, there's the offer that you make, and there's the follow-up 
then just go through and improve those things. Okay, those three things. Start with the offer, then focus on the follow-up, and then improve the number of people that you're sending. Okay, and so when it comes to the follow-up, let me give you a little insight on how to do the follow-up. The follow-up is all about getting people to interact and engage with you. Okay, the follow-up is it's all about creating relationship. Too often producers will think when I when I teach this, they'll go, well, well, you know, creating a relationship, but you know, they, they think into the future. They think like a year into the future. Like when we have 2000 customers, how am I going to interact with everybody individually? It's like, who cares? Let the future take care of itself, right? Focus on right now. You don't even have 10 customers. So guess what, buddy? You got time to interact with these customers one-on-one -on -one right now. You should be sending them direct messages and text messages and making phone calls just to see how they're doing. You should be sending personalized emails saying, hey, I found this article that I thought you might find interesting because I know you're on this health journey right now or because I know you're homeschooling. Here's this cool article or this video that I found that I thought you might find interesting and valuable. And you just send that to people. You provide value, right? The... Kind of, I put a post out yesterday in the, in the group. The secret to success in this business and any business is to do more, be more, serve more, and give more to your customers than anybody else in their lives does. If you will do that, if you will seek to become the most valuable person in their network, then you will have the opportunity to earn more money than you know what to do with. Okay? And for some of you, that <laughs> that's really a lot. <laughs> um, but so with the follow-up, it's all about getting people to engage and interact with you. It's sending them stuff. It's being helpful. It's being useful. It's value, like providing value in their lives, right? It's giving them things that they would want. It's maybe helping them, giving them a new perspective on something. It's um, if not just selling your product, but helping them get the other products that they want. Okay, well, like we've talked about this before, that if you sell just your grass-fed meat, but what else did they need, right? What other products did they need? Now, so let's say your customer is... You know, they, they are looking like their goal, their goal right now, one of their main focuses in life is I want to be super healthy. I want to be super fit. I want to feel good in my body. I want to be strong. They're like on this transformation, this health transformation journey. Well, what are all the things that they need in order to achieve that transformation? Well, they need knowledge, right? They need knowledge about nutrition. They need knowledge about fitness. They need knowledge about sleep. What else do they need? Well, they need products so that in the nutrition, they need food, right? Maybe they need supplements. Um, what else do they need? In the in the products about um, sleep, right? Maybe they do. Maybe they need supplements for that. Maybe they need some books, right? There's a great book. I forget the author's last name, Matthew something, on um, why we sleep and how to sleep, whatever. That's a great book. Um, maybe they need um, some great videos or um, knowledge information on best practices, right? Like tips to follow before bedtime. You know, like turning off the the lights or having getting a dimmer from like a certain Philips bulb. Um, I mean, sending them st this stuff. The whole point is. A sharing this type of stuff with them, even if it's just information, even if it's just like free stuff, hey, I found this, I thought you might find it interesting. That, that's how you create relationships, right? That's how you and I would create a relationship, one-on-one. -on -one. That's how humans interact and, and create relationships and strengthen bonds is that we discuss and we share and there's a back and forth, there's a give and take, right? And so if you will seek to do that and strive to do that individually with your customers, two things will happen. One, they will come to love you, respect you, and feel so grateful for the relationship that they have with you that they will begin to evangelize you everywhere, to everyone. They will talk about you all over the place. And number two, they'll start buying from you. And they'll continue buying from you because as you continue to provide them value, they will continue to reciprocate by buying your products because they're receiving value. And so that is just some ideas on how you can be following up. It's like seeking to be the most valuable person in your customer's network or in your customers' lives, seeking to provide them, to do more for them, to be more for them, to give more to them, to help them more than anyone else does. And it doesn't matter if all you have, like, quote, I, I really can't stand this, this idea of like, well, we're just dumb farmers. Ugh, I hate that. I hate that, I hate that, I hate that. Um, I didn't grow up on a farm or a ranch, but I did grow up next to my uncle's farm and got to work on that. And that's kind of how, you know, that was my, it's only jobs or work I ever really did was, working on in his um, fruit farm and and uh, feeding the cows and stuff and the horses and, and uh, just little things like that. But um, there was this idea amongst all the farmer friends. We grew up in an agricultural, Wenatchee, Washington is the name, right? It's the apple capital of the world. Um, and so most of our friends and family um, were in that industry. And there's just this predominating idea. It's kind of like the, the aw shucks, like we're just dumb farmers, right? We don't know what else to do, so we're farmers. I hate that. I hate that. When you go look at, oh, most of, uh, I was going to pull a book up, but they're all online, I think, on my Kindle. But 
um, one of the things I love learning about early American history. I, I, people, some of my greatest heroes, uh, George Washington, John Adams, incidentally related to both of them, which is pretty cool, um, which and very kind of random. We just found that out last week um, through Ancestry.com. You should check that out. That's a plug for Ancestry. Um, and Family Search. That's another great app. Family Search, Family Tree, I think it's called. Um, incredible app. But uh, so I love learning about early early American history. And he, the truth is that all of these founding fathers, all of these generals in the army, all of these politicians, all of these people that were instrumental in laying the foundation for this country were all farmers. <laughs> they were all farmers. Yeah, some of them were gentlemen farmers, um, and some of them had a lot of money, but a lot of them didn't. And they were farmers. John Adams didn't have any money. He was a farmer. He was a farmer. And so this idea that, hey, we're just dumb farmers, I hate that because we're not just dumb farmers. We're not just dumb ranchers. We're not just dumb producers that don't know what else to do with our lives. This is a very intentional way that we're choosing to live, right? We all come from different backgrounds. We all have different stories and different reasons why we're in this business and why we do what we do. I mean, I'm from the tech industry, from the Silicon Valley world, right? But I purposely left that behind to come in here and be in this industry, in this world, to have this lifestyle and to be with people like you. And so we're not dumb farmers, dang it. We're not dumb farmers. And anything that needs to be done in this business to grow your business and succeed, you can do. You absolutely can do. You have everything that you need. Um, there might be one thing you lack, one thing maybe, and that would be the mindset, the belief that you can do, the belief that you can achieve, the belief in what's possible, right? And too often I find our people that come and they, they start working with us, it's actually it's surprising, um, but it's it's actually, it's ceased to become surprising this, this year. Um, and it's just, I've accepted it as kind of like, this is just like a fact of human nature. It's certainly something that I wrestle with. Too. But this idea that even when we know what to do and we know how to do things, oftentimes our belief that we can do it or that we should or that we'll, it will work is the thing that keeps us from taking action or limits our action or the actions that we take. And so often what we find is when people come to work with us in our customers on demand program, um, it's actually their mindsets more than anything that we have to work on in the beginning. And work on in the beginning, like really double down on that, but then consistently keep that the focus of, of your life, right? Um, I mean, so this is the book I'm rereading right now. Uh, yeah. eh, it's backwards. You guys can't see it. Sorry. Succeed and Grow Rich Through Persuasion. Eh, it's a terrible title. It's actually a great title, but this idea of rich, I don't really like. Um, abundance, prosperity, wealth, I like, but rich, eh, who needs it? Um, but this idea that we, it's like a constant process. We're constantly seeking and strengthening our mindset and our belief. And, and one of the things that I've learned that is responsible, I've seen that's responsible for my own success and for the success of the people that, I've, that I'm around and have been able to watch um, is that the people who succeed financially and really succeed, I mean like really like get their dreams and knock it out of the water, um, are those who focus only on what they want. And they literally do not allow any sort of negativity, fear, or doubt to even creep in. The moment a, like a negative thought comes in, they're just like, boom, get out of here. They, like, they just don't let it sit or settle. And so they're completely, entirely, 100% focused on what they want. And this idea of what they don't want, right? Like the things that could go wrong or how things might turn out poorly, that never even, like they don't let it in. And that's a lot of dang work. It's a lot of dang work, right? And it's worth, man, in Spanish we say, uh, vale la pena. It's worth the pain. It's worth the effort. It is worth every, um, everything that you can put into it to keep these negative thoughts or keep these, these like limiting uh, thoughts or beliefs out of your mind so that you can actually just focus on what you do want and therefore, and therefore you can like begin to take all the actions that are necessary to achieve your goals. And so focus on what you want. Forget everything else. Just focus on what you want. And in the sales process, there's the people, the offer, and the follow-up. Focus, focus, <laughs> focus first on nailing that offer and then the follow-up and then send a ton of people to your offer, okay? If you do those things, I promise you that there is, there's a level of financial success in this business awaiting you if you will do those things with the right mindset, focusing on what you want every day, that is hard to comprehend. It's hard to comprehend, especially if you have, if you have yet to achieve kind of great financial success. Um, it's especially hard to understand, hard to grasp how readily available it is um, because it's new and it's it's not familiar. It's something you know that you're not accustomed to or acquainted with. 
But if you will do those three things and focus on what you want and just be persistent in that focus and doing these three things and continually improving your offer, improving your follow-up and sending more people to your offer, then you will soon become acquainted with that level of success. And then it won't be new. It won't be um, abnormal. It will just be the normal way that you live your life. And I promise you, there is like, there's a level of abundance awaiting you that is available to you right now. And all you got to do is get that mindset right, focus on what you want, focus on the offer, the follow-up, and the number of people that see your offer. So go do those three things. If you'd like help with any of this stuff, come work with us. Come be a part of our community. Come join our Customers On Demand program. Um, I invite you to schedule a call to get all the information about it, to understand what we do, how we do, and why it works so well for every person who puts in the work and who joins the program and actually does it and works with us. And so I invite you to do that. And again, if this, is va- if this has been valuable, if this discussion has been insightful, has helped you in any way, please drop in the comments, you know, what, what was the big takeaway? What was the big takeaway from the video? And what's the thing that you're going to do, right? So the insight and then the action. Because if we have insight, if we have epiphany, but we don't act on it, then we might as well not have had the epiphany, right? You have to act on what you feel. You have to act on what you think. You have to act on your motivation. Because soon, if we don't act on motivation, then we cease to receive motivation. And so it's so important that we follow up with action. And so drop in the comments, what did you learn? What, what insight did you glean? Maybe what did you remember? Something that you already knew, you already believed, but it was a good reminder. Um, go ahead and drop that in the comments. Tag someone that this would be helpful for. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next um, training. All right, have a wonderful day. See y'all.